Tesla introduced the new Megapack this year in 2022. It's the next version of their large-scale commercial energy storage product, which they originally released in 2019. The previous Megapack has been said to store up to 2.6 megawatt hours of energy, but with the 2022 update, the stationary storage system now holds 3.9 megawatt hours worth of rechargeable lithium ion batteries. The Megapack is intended for use by utility companies as it can be charged off of renewable energy sources such as wind and solar, which are intermittent in nature. Megapack can then smooth out this energy to be used by the grid when needed, and it's also robust enough to deliver high power during peak energy usage times. Tesla CEO Elon Musk has stated on multiple occasions that Tesla Energy, which today is just a fraction the size of the automotive division, will end up being just as large. However, this hasn't been apparent over the last few years, with the stationary battery division still remaining small, showing little growth, negative to low profitability, and starvation due to redirecting batteries to the more important vehicle business. However, things have begun to shift. Tesla's VP of Investor Relations has recently stated, For the first time I can remember, we can access all the supply we need for both businesses, referring to both the energy and automotive businesses. And then just in the most recent quarter reported this past week, Tesla stationary battery deployments started to break out, growing an astounding 85% over the previous quarter. And it doesn't seem like it's stopping there. And before I continue, stop using Yahoo Finance, stop using Google Finance, and have a look at our website, themarketisopen.com, where we have instant stock quotes and financial data going back 10 years, and it's all freely available. Tesla reported over 2 gigawatt hours of stationary battery deployments in the September quarter of 2022, an all-time record for the company. This is a meaningful increase as it represents almost a gigawatt hour above just the previous quarter. Tesla derives the majority of its energy revenue from the commercial Megapack and the residential Powerwall, both of which hit records in the quarter. Tesla's Powerpack device, essentially a smaller version of the Megapack for commercial use, seems to continue to be available from Tesla, but more as an off-menu item. They still seem to sell it, but it doesn't appear to be on the company website anymore. Nonetheless, the Megapack is where the real scale is at, and it's set to lead the charge going forward in expanding the energy division. The new Megapack, released in the middle of the year, is said to be 60% more energy dense than Tesla's previous generation power pack device. It's also about 50% larger in kilowatt hours than the previous version of the Mega Pack, weighing 60% more, coming in at 83,000 pounds. This new Mega Pack comes in two configurations a two hour and a four hour duration. The two hour version has just a hair less energy storage capacity but it can supply twice as much power and costs about $100,000 more than the 4-hour version. This likely has to do with more expensive electronics in order to sustain such a power increase. The price of the Megapack could fluctuate depending on which US state it's set to be delivered in, and there's also a discount for ordering them in bulk. There's an $8,000 maintenance fee on a per-pack basis and a $700,000 optional installation fee for the two-hour pack, and this installation fee rises just marginally for each mega pack added to the order, but it appears to be a lot cheaper, only $300,000, for the installation of the four-hour version. The earliest delivery date, according to Tesla's order page, is for Q3 2024, which is two years from now, so they seem to be highly backlogged on this product. Elon Musk has even stated multiple times before and even most recently on the Q3 2022 conference call that there are no demand issues. The real challenge is supply. Up until now, Tesla has been assembling Megapacks at its Giga Nevada factory. They come pre-assembled to the buyer when ordered and they're built to be about the size of a shipping container so that they can more easily be transported. Although the new Megapacks are approximately 6 feet longer than their predecessors. However, Tesla has been hard at work at bringing up its new Megapack factory in Lathrop, California, which aims to produce 40 gigawatt hours worth of Megapacks per year. This seems to have started contributing to Tesla's sales, 
which is why stationary storage has started to break out to new highs. While the Mega Pack factory assembles the packs, the battery cells themselves can come from Tesla's own Giga Nevada factory or even third party suppliers. The Mega Pack isn't too picky on which types of batteries are used as compared to vehicles which are more stringent. Now it was exciting to see on the most recent conference call that Elon Musk said 4680 battery cell production was gaining rapid traction, having grown three times over just the previous quarter. It's not clear where Tesla is deploying their new 4680 cells yet, the majority seem to be going towards the Tesla Model Y. But as long as Tesla's vehicle division is satisfied with battery supply, then stationary storage can ramp freely only limited by the number of excess battery cells they have and the rate at which Tesla can produce the rest of the battery pack assemblies. Batteries have been the core limiting factor, but now Elon Musk has publicly stated a new interim target of one terawatt hour of vertically integrated capacity, meaning 4680 cells made by Tesla, not including suppliers. And he's directing the company to get there as fast as possible. He wants the team to go pedal to the metal, and that's supposed to be all US production according to Elon Musk. Keep in mind that 4680 cells are also going to be produced at Giga Berlin, which doesn't seem to be part of this aspirational number. Originally, the target was set for 100 gigawatt hours by 2022 and 3 terawatt hours by 2030. Though with an exponential growth rate, 1 terawatt hour shouldn't be achievable until at least the second half of the decade, assuming the 3 terawatt hour target by 2030. But if Tesla can achieve this perhaps by mid-decade, they may be ahead of schedule. On the conference call, 300 to 400 terawatt hours were mentioned, alluding to the amount of energy needed to transition the world to sustainable energy. It seems that Tesla isn't happy with just hitting 3 terawatt hours by 2030, as there would still need to be a hundredfold increase by the industry to make up the difference to transition the world. Tesla's senior VP of powertrain and energy engineering, Drew Baglino, also echoed that one terawatt hour seems like a lot, but it really isn't that much in the grand scheme of things. So Elon Musk's vision and sense of urgency appears to have escalated as he says Tesla is headed towards an unprecedented future. This is excellent news for Tesla as the market is so large that they can produce as many battery packs as they want and they likely won't hit any sort of demand issues for the foreseeable future. Furthermore, the stationary storage division according to Elon Musk will now considerably outpace the growth rate of automotive at an estimated 150 to 200 percent per year. And so it will begin to catch up to the vehicle business's revenue, although it makes up about 5 percent of revenue today. So it will still remain smaller than cars for many years to come, but the gap will begin to narrow. However, although Tesla had record gigawatt hours produced in energy storage this quarter, the financials didn't seem all that great. Tesla sold over a billion dollars worth of product in a single quarter, which has never been done by the company before in terms of energy. But expenses ate up most of that gain, coming in just $100 million less than revenue, which shows about a 10% gross profit margin. This was slightly better than the previous quarter in terms of gross profit dollars. But given that far less product was sold in Q2, margins this quarter were actually a bit lower. To be fair, the energy division wasn't at all profitable in Q1 of this year and in Q4 of last year and was just breaking even a year ago. So if Tesla is focusing on doubling down on stationary storage such that it makes up a much larger part of the business, Investors are very worried that not only will this division not be very profitable, but it could also lower Tesla's overall industry-leading margins, something that doesn't bode well for the stock price since analysts tend to focus heavily on margins. This is leading to some disappointment, but I think it's the wrong way to look at Tesla energy. First off, the stationary battery storage division is dragged down slightly by the solar part of the business which is grouped in here. This is still in its infancy and Tesla is experimenting with ways to improve solar installations and so solar may be contributing to some losses. Energy without solar has likely been profitable this entire time in the last couple years even though Tesla doesn't break apart the revenue and expenses for each unit. But Tesla Energy really only started taking losses when Tesla increased their solar deployments including hiring installation teams. 
Nevertheless, we can assume that solar makes up a small percentage of the total energy division, and so it looks like stationary storage alone still appears to have very low margins, although that may not actually be the case. A single megapack is made up of battery modules, bidirectional inverters, a thermal management system, controls, and an AC main breaker. While inverters are expensive and could cost tens of thousands of dollars for commercial grade electronics of this magnitude, it's highly likely that the battery pack itself is the most expensive part of the mega pack. On the most recent conference call, Elon Musk said that Tesla expects to reach $70 per kilowatt hour at the cell level for its batteries. And this doesn't include incentives. Tesla may be able to get an insane $30 or $40 per kilowatt hour making up about half of their costs in 2023, and Elon Musk was adamant that the company would get the full amount. But let's ignore these very lucrative incentives for now. These batteries need to be integrated into the Megapack, and so let's assume a price of $100 per kilowatt hour, which is fairly reasonable akin to vehicle battery packs, and given that stationary storage can use the cheapest lithium iron phosphate type batteries available, since there's no real mass constraint on a stationary piece of equipment. The new megapacks are 3.9 megawatt hours in size, translating to about $400,000 worth of battery cells, again before incentives. Even if the rest of the pack assembly was another $400,000 to be highly conservative for a total of $800,000, Tesla is still selling one of these megapacks for $1.6 million, without including installation or maintenance, and so that calls for 50% margins. So why is it that gross margins are only at about 10% in Tesla's financial results? Well, I expect to see stationary battery margins begin to expand rapidly over time. Here's why. The issue is that the energy division is temporarily suffering the same way that Giga Texas and Giga Berlin are, but with how the mega factory contributes to earnings. When a brand new factory opens up for production, the expenses related to constructing that factory, for instance, start to make their way into the financial statements. The cost of the factory itself works its way into the expenses of the products through depreciation. There's also other expenses such as labor or the energy used to turn on the lights at the factory per se, not to mention all the machinery that's running, and in the end, only a relatively small number of megapacks have been produced. Without the Megapack factory, Tesla has been selling about 1 gigawatt hour per quarter. We can therefore estimate that the Megapack factory contributed another 1 gigawatt hour this quarter. So Tesla built a factory that should be capable of doing 40 gigawatt hours per year or 10 gigawatt hours per quarter, and it only outputted 1 gigawatt hour worth of Megapacks or just 10% of its capacity. Therefore, these limited numbers of Megapacks were very expensive for Tesla to produce. They gain huge economies of scale as the factory ramps up. If they had instead delivered, say, 2 gigawatt hours of megapacks using a similar amount of resources, then that second gigawatt hour already had its fixed expenses paid for, so the profit from those new megapacks goes straight to the bottom line. This would increase Tesla's average margins. And so as Tesla works their way up to 40 gigawatt hours per year, what the megapack factory was built for, the margins of that business should approach the margins on the Megapack product itself, as the cost of the factory becomes less relevant with much higher production volume. The Megapack factory is in its earliest innings, and so it shouldn't be discounted. It's actually quite impressive that Tesla Energy is currently profitable on its own from a gross profit perspective, despite just starting up a brand new factory. It could end up being immensely profitable, bringing billions more dollars into Tesla's revenue stream. In the same way that once Giga Texas ramps up its vehicles, their new factory goes from taking losses to being very lucrative. As we estimated, mega packs are inherently quite profitable. They should be bringing in a lot of net income for Tesla, but only once they ramp up to fill a higher capacity percentage at their new mega factory. It will take some time to ramp up, but the patient investor could see some explosive returns as Tesla boosts their output. So how long do you think it will take before Tesla sees a meaningful increase in its energy margins? And how do you think the 2023 tax incentives from the Inflation Reduction Act will affect Tesla's income? 
please hit the like button and subscribe. We would really appreciate that. And a huge shout out to all of our patrons that helped to support our channel. Your support helps us to continue to make great content. Thank you guys so much for watching.